the drawing practice became as a way to actually really as like a warm up exercise in the studio. I never really intended to show these. And every day I would come in and I would spend, you know, you know, maybe an hour at most making a handful of these drawings. And they eventually now they have like a, a nice kind of uh, symbiotic relationship going on with the sculptures. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, there we go. Okay. So I just have a couple of shots over here of the exhibition. Well, let's move on to this. So the pieces began in 2017 uh, in a manner that I would uh, categorize historically, like in sculpture, as biomorphic abstraction. So these pieces are intended to uh, point towards, you know, anatomy, organic objects, uh, parts of the body, uh, in a way to just kind of explore the this kind of sense of this kind of, you know, something pointing towards this living, growing, breathing thing. And I'll tell you that these things range in scale from the smallest piece is in the neighborhood of about 27 inches tall, and the, the tallest piece is about uh, 45, maybe 48 inches tall. Eventually, the pieces start to start to uh, manifest uh, a gesture and uh, qualities that pointed more towards uh, a figure, but never quite whole. And I think that part of my practice has been pursuing the sense of of wholeness, physically, uh, emotionally, uh, you know, of place and of body. And the work is a series of pieces that's about that endeavor, which if, in my mind uh, can never quite be satisfied, or can never quite be filled. I'll tell you that these pieces are, uh, I work in a, what I would call a very improvisational manner. So I, I, I never start out knowing what my work is going to be. I may start with a, a broad gesture or a, a sense of motion. And I, the, the building of the piece and making of the piece is, is my way of figuring out. And before I was doing this kind of work, I was actually working, I, I've only been, been, I started working with ceramics about uh, 12 years ago, maybe, at most. And before that, I was doing a rather large, large scale steel sculpture. And uh, some of these pieces would take a year to build. And uh, as you can imagine, if you're, and these, uh, these, all, these were also not, not commissioned, these were on spec. So this is me going in like a factory worker and building these pieces and then schlepping them all over the country and installing them and uh, things like that. So what I found was that when it takes a year to build something, when it takes uh, you know, two, three plus thousand dollars just in material to build it, it's, it's hard to take risks and it's easy to become rather conservative. So pivoting toward, to the clay was a way for me to um, explore a new material that I was really humbled by because I, I, I hardly had any training in and uh, a way to uh, to work in a manner where I could start out building something without really knowing where it's going. Many of the pieces have, so these uh, I use like a, like we can get some of the like ceramic information out of the way. I use I use sculpture body, like a stoneware. I fire these to like 04 and I paint them. I don't glaze any of my work. They're all painted. The, the painting is a way for me to uh, avoid issues of glaze. <laughs> the painting is also a way for me to, some of the pieces which you'll see uh, have gotten kind of big and I actually fire in a couple of parts so the and then I I do kind of sculpting magic to make it look like that didn't happen, and the painting is a way to kind of just deal with that. Quite frankly, also I like the the kind of the the deep soak in saturation that latex paint can have on this ceramic, which is like a sponge, right? It just soaks it all in. I want the quality. I want these pieces to have quality of a piece of charcoal 
Like imagine snapping it and be like, it's the same thing all throughout. Are you applying spray? Uh, I do. Uh, I don't. I don't spray though. Actually, I'm about to start experimenting with spray, so it's interesting you bring that up. I'll begin by giving it a few washes with like a watered down latex to really kind of soak it in there, and then I'll use brushes and sponges. You can tell looking at this that there's some gray, some kind of brown, some kind of graphites in there. So I'll I'll put on tons of layers of similar kind of neighboring colors to build a sense of, um, of depth to that. A lot of the pieces have this uh, texture of kind of wrapping that, uh, that I, I, I think of things like bandaging and healing and propping something up, wrapping something so it doesn't fall apart. Uh, so I tend to, I tend to work with Maybe I'll start by making a few forms that I'll roll out with some slabs, uh, make some wonky forms, put them in a box for a day or two so they stiffen up. And then I'll start to kind of piece them together. And then I'll do some hand building on top of that. And oftentimes I end up cutting pieces off, grafting them onto other pieces, grafting them into different places so that, uh, so that I can really play with the, the formal qualities of the piece and kind of moving your eye around the piece and moving your body around the sculpture as well. At once, uh, probably, I mean, I think, I think at most two, most two, and then, and then one kind of like grabs my interest more or something like that. So I'll, yeah. I'll see, yeah, kind of focus on that one a little bit more. <laughs> I'm interested in uh, forms that relate to all kinds of living things, you know, human, animal, otherworldly. So in that last piece, yep. where you had sort of all similar relationships, are you hand building a cylinder or pitch bottom cylinder? So I'm just going to walk up here. So I think I made, I made this by, by rolling out the slab one, two, three, back there, and like let them stiffen up, and then kind of bring them together, and then do some hand building, and then maybe, maybe make another one, stick it on. So there's there's a lot of uh, almost like assemblage, I think, mm -hmm. with, with the making of them. Do you feel like the you want kind of play with these organic forms? Do you feel like that happens more initially or later when you put together a taller piece, or is it? Uh, I think that they. If I if I understand it correctly, I mean the pieces are are very much built like from like from the inside out. So I'll I'll, I'll begin I'll begin with kind of main structural elements that will give the piece, that will start to give the piece a gesture or a stance. And then these other kind of, um, some of them have kind of weird appendages and things like that, will start to kind of add on uh, as a piece moves and towards its conclusion. Does that make sense? Yeah, but, but sometimes you're doing things on the side that you decide to add to. To add on? Yeah, so the uh, sometimes I will I'll spend an afternoon making like wonky bits, right, and kind of put them in a box to kind of stiffen up, and then use come to the pieces and like start to kind of play with my placement of them. Yeah. Okay. Do you paddle forms together? Uh, I not really, not really. Yes, I do. So it's another it's another cool thing about the painting and um, the uh, sometimes I've, I have bisque pieces and even painted them and decided that they they perhaps seem to stay or I wanted to I wanted to add some element to uh, to kind of break them out a little bit more from the stance. So I'll bisque other pieces and I'll epoxy them on. And I use uh, 
either two, there are two products I'll use to kind of take care of the scenes. One is called Apoxy Sculpt. And the other, which is, I think the same exact thing is called Magic Sculpt. And it's kind of a two-part epoxy that you kind of rub together, get nice consistency. It works kind of magic. And then, yeah, and then I'll paint the whole thing. So I, that's, there's something about, and maybe it's because, um, let's see if this is, there we go. There's something, maybe it's because of my lack of training as a, in ceramics that uh, I, I really enjoy the freedom that the, you know, working on it at all stages allows me. So again, some of these drawings, I've, I'm, uh, I'll go through a few of these over here. Uh, many of these I make, again, rather quickly. And they are, uh, they eventually, like with time, they I start to, to create, I never, I never make a drawing and then decide I'm going to make a sculpture that looks like the drawing. But they do very much uh, now start to inform each other. And whether it's like these ink wash drawings or sketchbook work that I do, uh, I'm really, I really kind of enjoy the play between. The, the, the different, the challenge is that there is a, uh, there is a, uh, the ink wash just kind of create, can create some such light and ethereal a, such a light and ethereal presence, which is a neat trick to try to mm -hmm. capture in stuff you dig up from the ground. <laughs> right. Really yes. I, I've got some couple some in process shots this is from my studio. And this is actually of a piece that's not here. Uh, but here's uh, here's me kind of working kind of large. Uh, and actually I will tell you that something I'm trying to move away from now is the presence of that kind of uh, base that you see. So some of the pieces that you will see in the gallery, a couple of them have that. And uh, which is of course like a, you know, it is a, a physical structural uh, strategy. I think it also kind of pronounces the piece as a sculpture. I am a sculpture, I have a base. And so some of them are, uh, I guess I'm more interested in kind of freeing them from that. Do you worry at all that might, I mean, I don't know, because like, so much of this feels like it's you know, approximating the body, you know, it is so bodily. It's, I think that lens is so, it's so ingrained with the figurative sculpture, whether yeah. it's a bust or like the yeah. bust and Rodan. Like, do you think bringing those things would take it away from that, like, feeling of bodiliness? Or is, I, I was almost wondering if it was like almost a, a device to help like reinforce that. Yeah, like so if I eliminated them, like yeah. well, I, I guess I think that the that's a good question. I uh ultimately while the pieces point towards the body, I'm not really interested in representation. So I'm not, you know, it's you know, I think you can look at them and be like, okay, that looks like the head and that looks like a this or that. But the I think because I, I'm I'm not as concerned with representation. Maybe it's not that much of a big of a deal, but actually, I would love your feedback in the gallery. Some of them have them, some of them don't, and that would be a a, a great conversation to have. Um, so they are, you know, I build them up and I use supports, and I don't have any images here, but oftentimes I I build up like wooden structures around it that uh, keep it going. I think that what's what's really interesting for me about about clay is it requires care and feeding, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like even like, even like when you go home, you're like, you're like that thing's at the studio and like, it's, it's changing. It's changing at the studio. And I'll show you a piece also that changed so much that it died, uh, which, which happens. Uh, Do you use inner structure? Do you use like bamboo or inside? Uh, no, I don't. I've, I've tried to get good about kind of, integrating up like a honeycomb-ish kind of system of supports. I'll uh, sometimes have, 
Uh, but yeah, all bike supports tend to be external. Yeah. I'm curious if any of your work was outdoors. Like, have you ever been able to weatherproof anything? Have it? It doesn't. And I've got, you know, a couple, one of the initial pieces that I showed you, specifically the white one, I'm thinking about using that as a test. Like, like just, we're putting it in the backyard yeah. and like seeing what the hell happens to yeah. it. Why do you ask? Well, because I just feel like that would, like your stuff is so organic that I feel like it would look cool in mm -hmm. that kind of space mm -hmm. and would move mm -hmm. it away from that like sculptural form and push it more into yeah. an organic, yeah. like come out of the earth. Yeah. I've, 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 you know, you can go down a rabbit hole on the interweb machine about how to, like, how do you put ceramic, everything, I've read everything from it should remain porous so that it can soak through and bleed out to like, like seal the hell out of it. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. So um, I think because the pieces are painted, what I will likely do is take one that I'm not as concerned about and just maybe seal it up even more and stick it out there. I, I have a feeling it's going to be just fine. Yeah. And do you know what you use to seal it? Or are you still searching for that? Um, I mean, I mean, I, I, I think if I was, I mean, you could seal it with like a, like a, a an epoxy resin. That's yeah. one thing that you could do. I think yeah. they would really, really do that. I mean, though, I do think that the, uh, using paints that are designed for masonry, I think, because yeah. I think that that's the right, that's like the closest cousin. Yeah. Would, that's kind of how I would think about it. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I like finding, if, when all possible, like, like, can I do this? With stuff I can get at Home Depot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Driveway sealer. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So that's the that's the piece. And so, like, just like again, I'm like, talking about like this. These, um, you know, like, like all these kind of weird kind of like sexy like, like parts <laughs> and stuff, right? They 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 tend or whatever you want to be, right? Whatever does the job. Um, but they, those those tend to kind of evolve closer towards the end. Yeah. And then here's, um, like you can see like different kind of foam pieces. This is stuff I'm sure that many of you do in this studio as well. Just to kind of, there's a piece of, on the left side, a clamped piece of wood and um, you kind of make that stuff happen. And I think that the, uh, so this is a piece that is in the show. And uh, this is like how I've had to cut things up. And if you go look at the piece, I, I think that if you don't know that they've been cut, you don't really look for them. But like, if you go now in the studio, you'll, you'll, you'll probably see where that happened. I think you can you like look for it. So this is just like a, an epoxy that I use. Sometimes I actually now I, I tend to use, um, like JB Weld, which is like which is like a uh, same as um, PC seven, PC eleven, and you cut it with just like a wire tool. Or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I'll uh, what I'll do is I will I'll kind of wait until like it's at right it's at that point where I can cut it, but it's getting so much and. I'll cut it, I'll put paper on the base piece, and I'll put the other piece back on so that they dry together. And inevitably there is some, uh, I have to do some grinding because there's uh, like anywhere like little thin parts that will dry fat, you guys know what I'm talking about, will dry faster and then you have to, you have to fudge it a little bit. So you don't use the cutting material to pay attention? No, I I I I use like a an an adhesive epoxy, and then this like sculpting putty I use to fill the seams. And when I when I when I slice the pieces, I also here forgive me. When I slice, if you look at the seam, I um maybe this comes just from my like from my welding experience. I kind of bevel the seam. Right, so that there, so I definitely have when it comes to this stage, I have there's some place for that for that sculpting epoxy to kind of fill in. So I'll fill those in. You can actually manipulate it with 
water, just like with wet tools. Then when it dries, I will, I'll take a Dremel tool to, to kind of match it with the rest of the form. I, I tend to, when, whenever possible, make those seams in areas that have a lot of texture because it's a lot easier to kind of um, uh, represent that, right? Like sculpt that in, then like a, then a totally smooth surface. And fire the pieces together as well. No. Okay. No, I don't. Okay. I just let them dry because I think that there's something about their contact that maybe that maybe like okay. that'll help them kind of stay somewhat close together. But yeah. no, I um and yeah, no, I don't do that. And some some of the pieces I have a kiln, but it's not. Like, I don't have like a whopper kiln in my studio. Uh, sometimes I have taken pieces to school. Okay. Uh, with that kind of like tight clenching drive, you know, from, <laughs> right? But, uh, so, um, you know, just like looking at some of these drawings, I just want to talk just a little bit about the relationship of these to like, so this over here was, this is a sculpture that never made it. Um, this was one of those, like I came in one day and it was on the floor. Uh, but trying to get like if like if you think about like some of the drawings that the thinness of line, um, some of the drawings have like thin planes that kind of thin out in space and thinking about that like the idea of like a, a physical body having appendages that almost uh, that thin out to become like the environment around it things like that. Uh, but this uh, I will uh, of course you can never kind of really rebuild something like this exactly again but I do. I do certainly want to revisit that. Have you ever pumped air into something to make it more Uh, I have not. I've actually done that with steel, actually. Just like heat it up, like you can weld an envelope of steel, of like thin sheet metal, and um, you can puff it out like a pillow, or like a balloon. It's an, it's kind of an incredible somewhat scary process. It's a nervous. Yeah. yeah. There it goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I guess I would I would simply say that the uh, and this is what I'm about to say is not like I mean sculptors do this all the time, but I'm really interested in, in our experience circumnavigating the piece, kind of moving around it and the piece changing as we as we do that. But the I've, I've, I've become rather comfortable with working. Uh, I think that making art is very similar to like uh, just like living. So uh, I there is so much unknown that I have in my daily life. And uh, that manifests itself in the studio as well. And it took me a while to become comfortable with embarking on making something without a, without with kind of like a direction but not a real destination and uh so I, I kind of embrace that sense of not knowing and that the piece kind of builds itself and kind of points me in the right direction not like not like in a in a touchy-feely way not like in a spiritual way i have to tell you but um but each piece really kind of points me towards the next one And here, I think I just have a couple more shots. And that's it. 